One of the recipes for wildlife habitat here in West Texas is just add water. We're in an area here at the Rolling Plains Quail Research Ranch where we get about uh, 21 inches of rainfall in a good year. I want to talk to you about how we can harvest that water and create what we call quail oases. Follow me. Got this uh, philosophy from a rancher out in Fort Stockton, Texas. Fort Stockton uh, that area gets about 12, 13 inches of rainfall a year. And this rancher by the name of Sherman Hammond, who had a real uh, fondness for blue quail. I first met him about 15 years ago. Mr. Hammond was a water miser. His philosophy was that I want to keep every inch of rain that falls on my property and every inch that my upstream neighbor gives me. So he was a very astute, studious individual about water dynamics and how it flows across your country. He capitalized on that through what he called spreader dams, and we've adapted that same strategy here to create these quail oases. Now, Mr. Hammond had a 38,000 acre ranch up there southwest Fort Stockton, and every 100 to 200 yards, he'd have one of these spreader dams. Some people call them speed bumps, whatever. And that was to save his ranch roads. You got to appreciate that out here, much of our rainfall comes in torrents. It comes in these intense summer thunderstorms. If we get two inches of rain on a certain day, a lot of it's lost its runoff. And with that runoff goes soil, sediment, and so forth. So it's creating a, a non-source pollution, pollution type situation to a reservoir on downstream. The more we can keep that soil in place, the better we are. And the more we can keep that water in place, the better as individuals that we are. So that was Mr. Hammond's philosophy. I want to keep every inch that I can, and I want to soak down into my soil profile, not run down the Brazos or the Colorado River. The way he did that was, again, to save his ranch roads. And again, you can appreciate that that rain comes, it runs down these ranch roads just like a mini river. And so everywhere he was beginning to notice some erosion on his roads, he would take his dozer and he would sculpt out a little a divot and then he'd put that fill up on the road there and make a speed bump out of it. That water now comes running, it hits that diversion, it's shunted off the road, which saves his road, and it's collected in one of these divots, or again, what we call a quail oasis. They accomplish a lot of things for us simultaneously, and we're going to talk about some of those. We're experimenting with different types of seed mixtures to see what types of forbs, especially, that we can get coming up out here in these oases. For example, here's one called Illinois Bundle Flower. You may have read about it if you studied quail much. It grows quite a bit in the tall grass prairie areas, the 200 miles east of here, but you wouldn't expect to find it in a 20 inch rainfall zone in an upland situation. We've got a great stand of it right here. We threw this seed out here two years ago. It's done quite well. It will do nothing but get thicker over time, being a perennial legume, good seed value for quail, and again, should be the basics of a great oasis. Here we are, mid-August 2013. It's been a pretty good year rainfall-wise for us, and a lot of the country is fairly green. But notice where I'm stepping from, the brown nature of the grass, and as I'm getting closer to you, what a nice green little oasis we have right here. And again, that's because we collected that water and stored it right here. Now, one misconception that people have is they think we're trying to provide drinking water. Not at all. All we're trying to do is stop that water here, put it in the soil profile, and as a result, we're gonna grow more luxuriant plant growth. Out at Mr. Hammond's where we studied this 10 years ago, we produced 25 times more vegetation here than in the immediate uplands. When we did our bug collections, our sweep net surveys, we grew five times more insects here than in the immediate uplands. So that's two things that are important to quail right there. We've increased species diversity of our forbs, and as a result, we increased arthropod diversity, which are very important for quail. Let me show you just how much of an influence we've had here on this soil. We had about a half inch of rain about four days ago. First, I'm gonna walk over to the upland site I'm going to take my sharpshooter shovel and I'm going to see how far I can sink it into the ground right here. <clears throat> Looks like about four inches or so. Now I'm going to move over here where we've collected some of that moisture and let's see how far we can sink that sharpshooter.
get an idea of just how much soil moisture and water penetration we've had going into that soil right there. So again, we've literally created an oasis here. Better plant diversity. Here I have sunflowers. Here I have plains of bristle grass, western ragweed, alfalfa. We hand broadcast some alfalfa in some of these and it's done quite well. That'll mean more bugs for quail. Now these may not look as shiny right now because it's been a decent rainfall year. 2012, bad, bad drought. The only sunflowers we had on this whole 4,700 acre property were in these spreader dams like this. So again, the harder the conditions get dry weather wise, the better these little quail oases look to a quail. So even though they're good all the time, they even shine better during dry weather. Not only have we increased plant diversity, but we've probably made just a better microclimate for a hen and her chicks. Imagine if you will, we've got a hen rooster, eight chicks there. It's 105 degrees today. They start foraging about 5.30 this afternoon and they come to this situation. It's gonna be a little bit cooler. It's gonna have higher bug numbers. Ought to be important as a brooding area for Bob Whites. That's something that we hope to study. We've been planting different things in them. Again, the alfalfa, um, Illinois bundle flower, which I'll show you here in a little while. Illinois bundle flower is a wonderful perennial legume, good seed producer for quail. You'd never grow it in a 20 inch upland site in West Texas, but where we've made this 20 inches of rain probably uh, function more like 35 inches of rain because we focused it right here. Didn't cost us that much. Probably, uh, and we'll be doing some cost analyses on these spreader dams. We're probably talking about uh, 50 to $75 worth of dozer time to create one of these. Now keep in mind though, you can't just create one every mile and think you're doing any good. Mr. Hammond's ranch from the air looked like a bombing range. There were these divots everywhere. We're gonna be having a lot more of these. We've got in a sample of these that we've had for two years. I've been very impressed with them. And our idea is to cut and paste them across the landscape. So we hope to do that over the next two years. We'll be experimenting with different types of Ford mixtures that we like to see in these. How can we fine tune that uh, spreader dam, that quail oasis to make it ever more functional as good quail habitat? One of the things that we've done, we have these what are just electric fence insulators, but inside that electric fence insulator is a small instrument about the size of a watch battery. It's called an I button and it's a data logger. Every two hours, 24 hours a day, it's collecting temperature, it's collecting relative humidity and it'll do that for a year. So we have these in the quail oases, we have some in, in the upland sites. Can we document that we're influencing relative humidity and temperature by doing that? We collect insects out here. Are we influencing arthropod numbers? Again, our plant diversity, our plant biomass, how much we're growing. We're measuring all those to see how we can fine tune and hopefully uh, make this a practice that will reach uh, a lot of people here across West Texas. One of the other perennial forbs that we're evaluating in these quail oases is this one. Doesn't look like much now. It's, it's called Maximilian sunflower. It is a perennial sunflower. Here's a clump, here's a clump, Here's a clump, strong rooted perennials, beautiful wildflower coming about September, prolific seed producer. They're only gonna get thicker year after year out here. So my goal would be 10 years from now, wherever we have these, that we have little yellow islands come September of Maximilian sunflower in these quail oases. Just again, a real quick rehash on how we build these. Take a small dozer, D4, D5 type of a, of a bulldozer. I'm going to start right over there and he's going to push, he's going to, he's going to take that soil out of that little divot right there, put it up here on the road, and then he's just going to smooth this out to where we just have a, a fairly smooth speed bump up here. And again, the water's coming down the hill instead of running down the road, wiping out our roads. It's going to be diverted right over there. And we're going to have one of those, depending on the slope or the grade, we may have one of those every 100 feet, or we may have one of those every 200 yards. But you get an impression of, of how many of those we have on this particular type of site. Highly erodible soils, trying to keep the water from getting up any speed, put it into the soil, soil profile where good things will happen for quail.